Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here, and today's talk is going to be on leaky gut and autoimmune disease. So autoimmune conditions are one of the fastest growing diseases today. And again, there's one common etiology behind all autoimmune conditions, for the most part, according to the peer-reviewed literature, and that is a leaky gut. So let's go over what a leaky gut is first, so everyone kind of has that basic uh, foundational understanding. So in the scientific literature, it may be referred to as gastrointestinal permeability. And what's happening with a leaky gut? Well, this is your intestine here. This is the inside of your intestine where the food would go. But to kind of give it, keep it really simple at first, interlock your fingers together like this. These are what I call your tight junctions. They line your gastrointestinal tract, especially the small intestine. So that's what your tight junctions look like, your fingers tight together. So now what's going to happen is when you're eating, when you're eating certain foods, especially gluten and, and grains primarily, maybe casein molecules, or if we have dysbiosis, bacterial overgrowth, or parasitic infections, these are stressors that are in the gut that can cause these tight junctions to open up. So these junctions are supposed to be tight so the undigested food stays on the inside of the tract and not in the bloodstream. So now when we're eating these bad foods and we get exposed to these infections and our immune system isn't strong enough to fight it off, our junctions actually start opening up just a little bit. So again, healthy, unhealthy. And when the junctions open up, it gives the ability for food, undigested food, car food particles to poke out and to start floating into the bloodstream. And the immune system is not used to seeing food particles that are undigested. So it starts tagging the surface proteins. The immune cells will go up, will tag the surface proteins on these foods. And again, the surface proteins are similar to various tissues in the body. So let's review here. Again, we have our gastrointestinal tract right here. So this is the inside of the tract, this is the outside. And you can see we have these various microvilli that are like little vacuum cleaners that absorb nutrients. So our food and all of, our, all of the things that we eat are in the middle here. And again, you can see we may have parasites circled in P, we may have bacteria circled in B, we may have fungus circled in F, we may have inflammation, which are all the different starred components. We may have um, gut bacteria issues or gluten in G. And again, let's take a look right here. This is a snapshot of what our digestive tract looks like a little bit bigger. So again, here's where our tight junctions are. This is what a healthy tight junction looks like. And that's our fingers together like this. And again, when they, that tight junction starts to come apart and unzip, so to speak, we start to see a lot of the undigested food particles here slip through and go into the bloodstream. And that whole process that we just talked about with the immune system tagging those surface proteins happens right here. That's what we call molecular mimicry, where our body, our immune system actually tags these various surface proteins. And then guess what happens? This whole molecular mimicry, if we start tagging the surface proteins of the thyroid gland, well, we're going to develop Hashimoto's or potentially Graves' disease. Or if we tag it to the small intestine, we may develop Crohn's. Or if we um, tag it to uh, the pancreas, it may be diabetes. Or if we just create systemic inflammation in the gut, it could just be IBS. Or again, if we develop and, and affect other tissues, if we could have autism, it could affect neurological and, and learning and then increased chances of MS and dementia and, and Alzheimer's, if you will. So again, depending on what our body tags for the surface protein, it can affect and create any one of these um, diagnosed conditions. Uh, Dr. Alessio Fasano has done a lot of this research and he's found that it's, 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 to have an autoimmune condition, you need this leaky gut or gastrointestinal permeability to be happening. And again, the biggest solution that, that I recommend to all my patients, diet and lifestyle is really important. So cutting out all of the junky foods, eating foods that are anti-inflammatory, nutrient dense, and also low in toxins. Foods that are less irritating to the gastrointestinal tract is better. Remember, about 70% of our immune system lies in, inside these little parts of the, of the mucosa called the GALT the gastric associated lymphoid tissue in the stomach, and then in the intestines, this is an intestine snapshot, in the malt, the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. So all that tissue would be somewhere in this area. And if our immune system is constantly um, activated due to poor foods, 
Well, what's going to happen when we need it activated because of an infection or because of environmental allergens or because of stress? Again, if you're always activating your immune system, when you really need it, it's not going to be ready to work for you. So again, diet and lifestyle is really important. Infections. Again, some people have digestive symptoms and they may have started to improve their diet and lifestyle, but you're not quite getting the resolution that maybe you, you thought you want to get. So we have people that I, you know, I, I work with um, in the paleo community, patients of mine as well, and some people go paleo or change their diet and cut out a lot of these foods and they feel great and it's like a miracle. Others don't quite get all the way. And the people that don't quite get all the way, there's usually some type of infection that's keeping the body from healing. And looking a little bit deeper and getting assessed uh, using functional lab testing can really help figure out what's happening there. Next, the detoxification. Again, when, we, when our body has all these different infections, that can affect detoxification because a lot of detoxification happens via the hepatobiliary tract, meaning the gallbladder and the liver. And a lot of these toxins are actually expelled via the bile into the intestines. And if our intestinal systems are backed up, if we're chronically constipated, we're not digesting food properly, Again, that can affect detoxification and it can cause us to actually reabsorb, it's called auto-intoxication, to reabsorb a lot of these toxins. And again, some people, their hormonal systems are just so damaged from years and years of stress and poor eating that their ability to manage blood sugar, to have a healthy immune response is just depleted. So getting some support underneath that hormone system can kind of help jumpstart things. It's like having a, a low battery. Eventually, if your battery gets too low in your car, you will need a jump start. So again, this kind of acts as a good jump start to really help get the hormones, um, a good hormonal foundation underneath you so you have better energy, better blood sugar, and you can manage inflammation a lot better. So we kind of went over a lot of different things here. Um, for more information, or if you have questions specific to yourself or to your issues, feel free and click the link below and schedule the complimentary consultation. Uh, for any more information on myself and what I do and, and the patients that I treat, feel free and check out my website information below. And uh, feel free and stay tuned for future videos on this topic. Thanks. Have a great day.